The stock market is still continuing on this unbelievably strong rally, with the S&P 500 now up almost 10% from its lows just at the beginning of November, and the Nasdaq now up almost 13% with 11 positive days. On Tuesday, November 14th, the markets received very promising CPI inflation data sparking a very strong one-day rally, with the Dow gaining 1.5% and the S&P 500 and Nasdaq each rallying almost 2%. Looking at the S&P 500 on a technical standpoint, we have completely broken through the resistance channel, and now investors are wondering how much higher it can go. Now, as we all know, the tech sector has been the key driver in this year's rally, contributing 12.3% of the total 19% gain in the S&P 500. But now, that may be changing. There are certain sectors of the market that are better equipped to see large price movements for the coming year. So right now, there might be a major shift taking place. And this is where things get really interesting. To begin, looking back at the S&P 500 chart, there's a very strong resistance right around 4,500, which could mean that the index could retrace a little. And you also notice quite a substantial gap upwards, which could spark some concern for traders in the short term. Now, for those who don't know, a gap on a stock market chart occurs when the price of a security opens significantly higher or lower than its closing price from the previous trading session, creating a visible gap in the price action. The reason this is important is because one common observation in technical analysis is that gaps in the stock market tend to get filled over time. This means that the price eventually retraces to the level at which the gap occurred, closing the gap on the price chart. Now, the reason behind this large gap is the CPI data for the month of October that was just released. And judging by the market's reaction, it's safe to say that investors were very pleased with the results. With month over month CPI coming in 0.1% below expectations at 0%, marking the first time since January of 2023 that we see CPI inflation data come in at 0%. But of course, investors do pay a lot closer attention to core CPI data, and to everyone's surprise, core month-over-month -month CPI came in 0.1% lower as well, at 0.2%, along with year-over-year -year CPI also coming in 0.1%, lower than expectations at 3.2%. This was all very positive news for the markets, with all major indexes opening sharply higher at 8.30 a.m. pre-market. This chart right here shows the comparison between annual consumer price index changes, and you can see that both core and regular CPI are continuing on a downward trend. Now, for those who don't know, core CPI excludes food and energy prices because they are known to be extremely volatile, therefore providing a more comprehensive view of the underlying inflation trend. The largest contributors to the drop in CPI were vehicle prices, which had been a key inflation component during the spike in 2022, now declined by 0.1%, while used vehicle prices fell by 0.8%, down a total of 7.1% from just a year ago. On top of that, airfare, which was another closely watched component, declined by 0.9%, down 13.2% from just one year ago. All of this showed very hopeful signs that high prices were easing their grip on the US economy, potentially giving a green light to the Federal Reserve to stop raising interest rates once and for all. Now, simply looking at this chart, you do see a flattening of the downtrend in core inflation data, still sitting at 4%. Of course, of course, as we all know, the Federal Reserve's target still remains at 2%, so a flattening of this trend may cause a little bit of concern. However, the 10-year Treasury yield dropped a staggering 4.1% in a single day, now sitting at 4.3% at the time of this recording. And as I mentioned before, the 10-year Treasury yield acts as a gauge for future expectations of interest rates. So with the declining yield, investors are now more optimistic that interest rates will start trending lower. And by the way, I wanted to quickly remind you guys that Seeking Alpha is currently offering $50 off their premium plan. So go ahead and grab that deal before it's gone. You can find the link in the description down below. Every single sector of the S&P 500 closed green on November 14th, but two particular sectors saw a major jump, and that was utilities and real estate. The real estate sector gained almost 5.5% in a single day after the CPI report, and the utility sector gained almost 4%, completely dwarfing the technology sector, which has been the key driver in the S&P 500's total performance. So this is what caught my attention. ETFs that have large holdings within the real estate sector and the utility sector saw a large move to the upside on November 14th 
like SPYD gaining more than 4% and DVY rallying almost 3.2%. Every single one of these ETFs outperformed the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. So why have these sectors seen the largest gains? And what does that mean for future expectations? And most importantly, is this a buying opportunity? Now, I've talked about this before, but utilities are an interest rate sensitive sector of the markets. So utilities tend to have an inverse relation with interest rates. Utility stocks are considered income investments because they typically offer relatively higher dividend yields compared to other sectors. However, if interest rates on fixed income investments begin to exceed the dividend yield of utility stocks, then investors will shift their focus towards the bond market. Just a few months ago, when we saw the 10-year treasury yield rally upwards past 4%, the utility the utility sector suffered a major decline as investors started to shift their focus to treasuries as a safer and better source of income. But now that we see a major downward trend in the 10-year treasury yield, investors are now shifting their focus back into the utility sector. Now, the real estate sector behaves similarly to the utility sector as they are also interest rate sensitive investments. However, the sector is subject to a lot more price volatility, which can be seen as a good thing. So let me explain. Now, I'm specifically referring to REITs. And for those who don't know, real estate investment trusts are investment vehicles that own, operate, or finance income-generating real estate across various sectors. This includes residential, retail, office, healthcare, and mortgage REITs. Now, if you guys want, I am more than happy to make a video that goes through REITs in detail because it is a very interesting investing avenue. But overall, REITs provide a way for individuals to invest in real estate without having to directly buy or manage properties. The real estate sector has been the hardest hit sector in the S&P 500, losing almost 29% from its peak back in April of 2022, and just recently gaining 7% back from the start of November. And this is simply because of rising interest rates. You see, higher interest rates tend to decrease the value of properties. Therefore, there's an inverse relationship. This chart shows the average 30-year fixed rate mortgage in the United States. And at the beginning of 2022 is when we saw mortgage rates skyrocket to levels we haven't seen since the early 2000s. And as a result, median home prices fell quite a bit as well. Granted, not as much as you think. And this simply goes to show that the value of real estate will always trend higher no matter what the economic conditions are. So the earlier you get your hands on real estate, the better. With the rise of interest rates, the cost of borrowing increases, and REITs often use debt to finance the acquisition and development of new real estate properties. Therefore, this can lead to higher interest expenses and reduce their profitability. And on top of that, like I said before, the value of the properties tend to decrease, which can negatively impact the net asset value of REITs. And then of course, there's the dividend yield. REITs are popular for having higher than usual dividend yields, and that is simply because in order for them to qualify as securities, at least 90% of the income generated from real estate properties must be distributed to investors in the form of a dividend yield. What's important to remember is that this type of dividend is non-qualified and therefore is subject to regular income tax, unless you're holding it in something like a Roth IRA, where all of the income generated is not subject to any taxation. But overall, these investments are subject to a lot of volatility with changes in interest rates. So considering that the real estate sector is sitting at levels that we haven't seen since the pandemic crash, a company with a very strong possibility that interest rates have reached their peak and will start to trend downward next year, and with 10-year treasury yields already pricing in these changes, you can expect REITs to see significant upward price movements, creating an amazing opportunity for anybody who wants to capitalize on this. Overall, there's a lot of optimism in the markets right now. However, there are some major things investors still need to look out for. For one, as mentioned before, the really strong resistance seen on the S&P 500 chart, which could create some reversal in the near term. The second is the flattening of the annual core CPI chart. I just feel that Jerome Powell would not have made any of those comments during the press conference last week if it wasn't for a reason, so it is something to look out for. But the most important thing to consider is the possibility of a rise in inflation, primarily due to the spike in gasoline prices caused by the wars in Europe and the Middle East. But I feel that there are certain sectors of the market that are now better positioned to benefit from the potential drop in interest rates, and right now, the tech sector may not be the answer anymore. And billionaire bond king Jeffrey Gunlack recently stated, The Magnificent Seven will obviously be the worst performers in the upcoming recession. Whatever is leading the charge going into the economic downturn invariably must lead the charge on the way down. I would get out of them. I will make another video that expands on this very soon because it is extremely interesting. And that is all for this one. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!